Turnbull, I think there's, it's a really unique system where they're using, very actively using a wide variety of strategies. Commercial thinning, the non-commercial thinning, the prescribed burning, um, both in forest, in woodland, and in prairie or grassland out here. And so I think there's a lot that we can learn from what they're doing and they've, they've shown that they can effectively apply their science in a way to achieve some of their long-term goals. The fact that here at Turnbull, they've been trying to trying this for a period of time now. For over 20 years, they've been trying to look at how best to bring back the system, the ecosystem that they're looking for, and how science plays a role in that. I think part of that, too, is the fact that as you try to apply your science, you've got to learn from how you go about it. It doesn't always come out the way you want. So it is part of an experiment as you go. And so they, they look at that all together and come out with what works best here for them to be able to reestablish fire within the system. I'm the Natural Resources Conservation Manager for the Oregon Military Department and we were doing a field trip uh, to, to look at the prescribed burns and some of the other habitat management that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has done here on the, on the wildlife refuge. Very much appreciated to, uh, seeing how the, the Fish and Wildlife Service has experimented with the, the various techniques, uh, both burning and thinning of their forests. Those are things that we do and seeing you know, what they've done, how they've gone about doing it, and seeing what the results have been are, are, is very useful to us. But the challenge is, of course, when you start to apply things like re putting fire back into the system and stuff, you don't really at first know how that's going to work. So we took a process or a strategy that's trial and error, but there's actually a more technical term that's called adaptive management, which is basically trial and error, is that you go out and you, you use your, the scientific knowledge, your, 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 your best you know, guess, I guess you would call it, at what should be done. You apply it, but the trick there is that you monitor it and make sure that you can measure what happened out there. And as you review that monitoring and stuff, and you have objectives, you know where you want to get, and you see how that strategy is working, and it's not working, then you need to make adjustments. Either you make adjustments to the strategy, or maybe you make adjustments to your assumptions. So we just need to try to find the strategy that's the most effective at getting there. And so we went through this adaptation over time, starting with doing nothing. You know, and some people actually had that philosophy, just leave the forest alone, it will do what it's gonna do, you know. But that didn't work. And then we, then we tried doing fire, and then we used manual thinning, non-commercial thinning, and then we incorporated the commercial thinning into it. And even the commercial thinning aspect been kind of difficult for us to get done on the ground in a consistent way. And, and moving us closer to that sort of desired condition for ponderosa pine than, than our previous work had done. Also worked together with folks at the Turnbull and at the other agencies kind of at a state level to address some of the larger political and social problems that we're facing that are they're creating limitations for applying fire. That's something that the Fire Science Consortium here in the Northwest and the Washington Prescribed Fire Council are working on in terms of addressing some of those social and political issues with smoke, um, with education, uh, with working with private landowners, working with the different agencies to educate and communicate about the benefits of prescribed burning.